So these questions are gonna carry on onto the next slides. So here's 6.1 and 6.2, and then it does go to 6.3 and then 6.4. Okay, so the sketch below represents the graph of two parabolas, f and g. They give us the equation of f, okay, so just always make sure that's this, okay, that's this one here. Then the turning point of g is 2 and 9, the y-intercept 0, 5, b and d are the x-intercept of f and g respectively. Show that the equation of g is that for four marks. Now, there are only two ways that you can find the equation of a parabola. Let me quickly remind you. If they give you x-intercepts, both of them, well, sometimes there is only one if it touches, if it turns on the x-axis, okay, but that's another story. So if they give you the x-intercept, use this formula. Okay, don't forget the a. If they give you the turning point, then you use this one. Okay, that is how we do this for parabolas. All right, so what have they given us in this question? Well, they've given us a uh, turning point, so we're gonna use this one. You don't worry about this for now. It'll get there by itself. So we're just gonna say y equals to a bracket x minus p squared plus q. And then remember that this here, the turning point is two and nine, so that means the graph has moved two places to the right and nine places up. Then to find a, you plug in another point, so we'll use zero and five, so the five is a y value, the zero is an x value, and so we can say five is equal to. Now, this part here just becomes 4a, 4a plus nine. Remember that this nine is not part of the a. Some students do put them together. Now we're gonna take the nine over to the other side, so five minus nine is equal to 4a, so minus four is equal to whoopsie, minus four is equal to four a, so a would be minus one. Now what you do is you just put the a back into this equation, so I'll write over here, so y is equal to minus one, and now we're just gonna go multiply this all out. So how do we do that? My suggestion, put these into two brackets first, because you can't put the minus one inside there until you've done, let's first do the brackets. Okay, so minus one. Okay, leave the answer of those brackets over here. So x squared minus, that'll become minus four x plus four plus nine. Then put the minus one in. And then simplify. Sorry guys, I'm gonna write that down here now. So y equals to minus x squared plus four x minus five. And that's how we do it. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Next one says, calculate the average gradient. Okay, now when you see the word average gradient, I just want you to think of gradient. Just think of gradient. You know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's all that it means between a and c. Okay, the only reason they're calling it average is that if you connect, uh, if you look at a and c, it's not, it's not a perfect straight line. There's a bit of a curve there, right? Um, but they want you to pretend that it's a straight line. So that's why they say the average, but you can ignore that part. Okay, so we know that that's the formula for gradient. So I'm gonna let this one be point number two and this one be point number one. So we can say that m is equal to nine minus five over two minus zero, and that's gonna give us four over two, which is then equal to two. This one says calculate the length of BD. Now it's a very easy question. They want the, um, you need to find the coordinates of that and you need to find the coordinates of that. Okay, so we know that the equation of G, remember we did work that out in the previous question as negative X squared plus four X plus five. So all that we really need to go and do is find the X intercepts of F and then also find the X intercepts of D and then we can easily do this question. So let's start with F. So let's go find its x-intercepts. To find the x-intercept, you make y equal to zero. Take the eight over. Multiply that, you can multiply this two across, or you can say eight divided by half, whatever you prefer, it's both the same. And now we take the square root, and remember you always say plus and minus. Okay, so that one has x-intercepts at 
plus and minus 4. So that means that b would be um, b would be negative 4 and 0. And then uh, this point here, which they haven't labeled. Okay, we don't have to go fill that point in. So there we go. Now let's go do g. So g is negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. Um, I should actually say here, so b, therefore b is negative 4 and 0. Okay, now we're going to go do the same for this one. I don't like working with the negative, but you can if you want to. But I'm just going to divide everything by negative. This one would actually factorize. But if you wanted to, you could also just use the quadratic formula. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, that's how that one factorizes. And then therefore, x would be equal to 5, or x would be equal to minus 1. Okay, so this is obviously the minus 1, but we want the one with 5. So we can then say, therefore, d is 5 and 0. Now, you can easily get the, um, the length from here to here. You don't even have to use the distance formula. Think about it. You're going from minus 4 up to 5. How many units is that? That's 9 units. Therefore, the answer is 9 units. If you wanted to use the distance formula, it would still work. So that is okay. This question says, use the graphs to solve, use the graphs to solve for x if f of x must be bigger than 0. So remember, when they say bigger than 0 like this, they're talking about you know, sometimes I call this the ocean. I call the x-axis the ocean. You know the ocean where there's like fish and boats and all of that? Um, then we always say that uh, this area here is above the ocean, and then this area here is below. So when they say that they want to know where the graph is above or bigger than, it means above. So that's what they want to know. They want to know where is the graph f above. So if you look at graph f, it's above over here. And then again, over there. So you could simply say, and I'll show you the different ways of answering. Like you could use, some people prefer to use brackets. Some people prefer to use um, the interval notation. I mean, the set builder notation method. I'll show you guys. So we could say, um, here's one way of saying it. You could say that, so for this area here, you would say um, x is smaller than minus 4. But you can say smaller than and equal to, because that's what they've got. And then you would say, or... Don't say and, you'll then say x is bigger than or equal to, uh, oh no, that's a 4 here, 4, there we go. So, okay, so that's for that area over there. If you prefer to use the brackets, you could say x is an element going from negative 4, sorry, negative infinity up to negative 4, or you could say or, or you could say or like that, and then you would say from 4, to infinity. All right. And then that's for 6.4.1. Now for 6.4.2, it says, where are the graphs f and g strictly increasing? Okay, so what does increasing mean? Well, increasing is when the graph is going up if you look from left to right. So this area here, that is not increasing. That is going downhill. Can you see that? So where are both of the graphs going uphill? Well, what we do is let's go find out where one of them is going uphill. So let's see, where is f going up? f is going up here. Okay, that's where f is increasing. And then where is g increasing? Well, g is increasing over here. See, it's going up, 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 up to there. Okay, so where is the overlap? The overlap is going to be from this y-axis up to this turning point. Can you see? Um, yeah, at the turning point there, sorry. So in that area, in that region there, both graphs are increasing. So we will just say, um, I'll show you the different method, but you could say when x is bigger than 0, because that's the y-axis. We're not going to include the y-axis because... At that point, the yellow graph, or the graph of f, is not increasing. It's it's probably flat over there. So, And then we could say smaller than um, the, the x value over here, which is 2. If you prefer to use the bracket method, you could say x is an element going from 0 up to 2. 